Hey, Wayne here, and a special thanks to Arvala for sending out their C-Pro electric scooter for review. We're gonna check it out right now. <laughs> oh, I knew it was gonna happen eventually. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. This is the Arvala C-Pro. It's an electric scooter, powerful, but I want to tell you before I dive into the scooter that Arvala is having their Christmas sale, which will last from now through the end of December. So if you're looking for a good, powerful scooter, check out the Arvala website. I have links down below. It is an affiliate link. If you use it, it helps the channel out a lot. I really appreciate it. But um, now's a good time to get a powerful scooter if you're looking for one. One other quick note, I'm also working on Arvala's M11 scooter. That's their top end scooter. So I'm currently working on the Arvala C Pro, but they sent me their M11 scooter, which they be I believe is their top of the line. So this is gonna be coming up soon. Make sure you're subscribed. Don't miss out on this one. This one also has a dampening system built onto it. Lots of lights, lots of power, lots of fun. To make sure you check that out or that you don't miss it, make sure you subscribe. All right, let's get into some of the specs on the scooter. This scooter, the C-Pro, comes with two different batteries. One's a 60 volt and one is a 52 volt. This version is the 60 volt, 21 amp hour, 1,352 watt hour battery. And it has 38 newton meters of torque. The 50 volt version has slightly less newton meters being 36. This 60 volt version will get about 40, 43 miles on a full charge while the lesser voltage version will get 56 miles. So a little bit more voltage, a little bit less voltage will get you a little bit more mileage. I think you probably get more mileage with the lesser voltage version because of lesser torque. This 60 volt version of the C-Pro comes with hydraulic dual brakes, comes with two sine wave motors that are 1200 watts each peaking out at 2,400 watts. The 50 volt version should max out at about 37 miles per hour, while this version, the 60 volt version, should hit about 46 miles per hour. All right, let's check it out. And I'm going against wind, 31, 36, 38, I'm running out of road, 40. Okay, I'm not taking, I'm not looking down anymore. <laughs> so I know I got up to 40. So my top speed according to the speedometer was 40, I think 40 or 41 miles per hour. I ran out of road, so it might be able to get up to 46, but maybe a lighter person on a straighter road could do it. So with when the single dual mode button is out, it's in single mode. When the button's pressed in, it's in dual motor mode. The other button, which is the eco turbo button, when it's pressed in, the scooter will be in eco mode. And when it's out, it's in turbo mode. So yeah, a little hard to remember, but you figure it out while you're riding. You can feel the difference. Wouldn't really worry too much about these buttons. You'll figure it out while you're riding, but I do suggest that when you take off from a dead stop, you don't do it in turbo mode with the dual single modes on. So like a lot of high-end scooters, this one has dual suspension, which, whoa, works pretty good. You might not want to be hopping around on it and press the throttle button at the same time like I just did. They have the left turn signal, and a right turn signal, and they work independent from each other. So you could have them both going at the same time to make them look like an emergency flash is, is happening. And you know when they're on and off by looking at the button here on the left handle, um, there is a green light that comes on when they're engaged. And of course, it comes with a pretty bright front light and a brake light. It comes with both a horn which is not very loud. It's built into the light and not very loud. And a bell. 
just pretty much an average bell. So to start your scooter, it has an NFC card reader right under the display. So all you do is power on your scooter, touch the NFC card to the NFC card reader, which also shows your voltage, and the scooter will start right up. Now, if you tap through the power button, things will change on the display. You can go from trip to voltage, which is also shown down here, and odometer. So I'm going to leave it on trip. If you want to change any of the settings, you press and hold the plus and minus buttons together and you get to your program settings, the P settings. So the first one is for the display brightness. That's as low as it'll go, higher, and as high as it'll go. Press the power button one more time, just tap it. Now you can change it between miles and kilometers, so I like mine on miles. And there's a whole lot of other settings in here that I don't recommend you change. Press and hold the plus and minus buttons again together and you get out of that menu and you're back where you need to be. The latch system on this scooter is really tight and holds on really well. So that is something that is a big plus for this scooter. The stem feels very sturdy and it's adjustable. You can raise the height and lower it. So pretty neat right there. I like the way that they did the stem on the scooter. For tires, we've got knobby tires, 10 by three. These tires should help when going off road. It has a nice wide deck with some sandpaper on it and a foot pedal, foot rest on the back. And the fenders are really nice looking too. For a complete set of specs, you can go to my website, spiderwayne.com, and check out my review, my written review on this scooter. Or you can go to the Arvala website and check it out. I'll have a link down below for both. If you use my affiliate link to get the scooter, it helps the channel out a lot, and I really appreciate it. Thanks. For slopes, it should handle 30 degrees. I'm going to take it up this hill over here and see how it does. I don't know what the slope is on it, but let's just see how it does in the dirt going uphill. Okay, I'm gonna try going up this hill. I just put it in turbo mode, which I probably didn't need to do. But wow, this is smooth. Tires are handling really good. There's a lot of sand here, so I got a little bit of sliding going on, but overall not bad. The dual suspension is working really well. A lot of sliding here. All right. Okay, so parts of this was a bit steep and a little slippery uh, with all the sand. This is a very sandy road. Okay. All right, did it well. Handled that just fine. Looked a lot harder than it felt. Okay, so that was a lot of fun. I would say that this scooter is good for thrill seekers. Anybody that wants a lot of power can go off road, climb up some hills. I think this is the way to go.
has a lot of torque, you can feel it. Believe me. Here's uh, some gravel. Let's see how well it does in gravel. This is very loose dirt. Oh, this is just fine. No problem at all for these knobby tires and dual suspension. Okay, this is a good riding scooter, a very well built scooter. Having a lot of fun with it. I think if you're looking for something with a lot of power and a lot of torque, this is the way to go. <laughs> I'm reviewing it right now, but maybe, maybe later. It's a fairly heavy scooter. It does latch and fold, so it's easy to put away. Uh, as far as carrying though, I'll put the weight up on the screen because it is a little bit heavy. Might not be for everybody that needs to pick their scooter up to put it away. But if you don't need to pick it up, it's a great scooter. I can't wait to try out the M11, which is coming up soon. So make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you don't miss that. The Arbala M11. That's a pretty unique scooter. You're not gonna wanna miss that one. If you like this scooter, please give me a like down below. Check out my affiliate link so that you can grab one for yourself. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification button so you don't miss out on anything new, including giveaways. Grab yourself one, get out there and ride, and I'll see you on the next one.